well for the other consultant. We have a better relationship with the sales, so to improve the sales and with the product owner. So today we're here to showcase a demo for HR. Because HR is a very big scope, it's a wide, complex, and constantly evolving job involving the whole company. Every employee uh, is part of HR. And there is a lot of administration, a lot of legislation to follow. So to cover everything, we need more than 10 applications. 10 applications managed by the same department, often a few people. So it's very important to have a very integrated solution, uh, simply sim simple to use, uh, and a great tool overall. So knowing all that, we are here today to display to showcase a demo about how to manage employee from A to Z. So A, when, where everything starts is recruitment, referral, uh, the onboarding and the contract setup. Then we follow up on the day-to-day -day HR management. So you make everyone's life easier using time off. Uh, you empower your employees using skills, using appraisal. And then uh, nothing lasts forever. You also have to manage departures of employees in the, your database as well. Knowing that, let's jump straight into our demo. I see you later. Yeah, see you later, Maxime. So let's jump straight into our database. For the one who haven't seen it, this is the new design milk of the version 16.4. Uh, it's, coming, um, it's coming up soon. So let's jump straight into the recruitment application. Here, I'm going to showcase some of the new features, but I'm also going to showcase just what's going on, the wow effect, what you can show to your client or what you can actually use in your database if you manage the HR of your company. Here I'm going to showcase it mainly for the marketing and community manager job. So you can see here you have a great overview of what's going on in the recruitment. You often it's one, people, uh, one person, maybe two people managing the recruitment for the whole company. So it's great here to have an overview of every job position that is open or not, that is published on our website or not. All right, so here, for example, for the marketing and community manager, I can see I'm looking for three people. I already have five applications in the pipe and I have two late activities that I should get going. This one is published, so I have a job page, which I will see just later. I can showcase some configuration here. So all the detailed information of my job position, such as the department, uh, the job lo location, the email, yes, I can use to uh, apply directly on the job. And here the process details you, you have to follow to when you apply for the job. This is very important because if you work in HR, you know that the recruitment job is a very competitive job. There is often a uh, few candidates and you have to really be better than the other company or stand out. Your company has to stand out to uh, attract the best profiles. So here having a simple process, a, a good user experience and also to save time be between the different steps is very important. So I'm going to showcase all those features and how Odoo can help you for your recruitment. So knowing all this information, I can go back on my Kanban view and I'm going to showcase directly how you can apply for a job. The first way, very easy, is with the job page. So if you know Odoo, you know that Odoo is an integrated solution with its own website integrated. I didn't have to do anything here. I have a, w a website page just to post uh, that can, I can post for the job and anyone can come and apply from here. So if you want to modify it, you have the website builder on the right here where you can modify, edit, whatever you want. This is an HR webinar, so let's leave that for the website uh, webinar and focus on HR. So what I can do is apply now. Let's say that it's uh, Maxim applying for the job. So Maxim, let's, okay, you can fill in all his information and feel lucky. As I said before, here is the process details on the right, so very clear information for my uh, candidates. Just by two clicks, I was able to already apply for the job. So this is one way to apply. If you get people back to your website, another, another way is just with the uh, email alias. So I show here that for this position, it's HR marketing at uh, my database. I've set it up right here. So I created an email. Uh, I have written uh, why uh, I'm passionate about the job. I have put my CV as well. And I can just send the email. It will be get back in my database 
with the attachment so I can uh, follow up with this uh, application. Let me click on it. I can see Maxim's application right now. Let me refresh to have the one I just sent by email. Okay, it's here. Let me get back to full screen. Uh, so now you see the two new application that uh, I just uh, post that I just created. Let's say that Maxim will do the initial qualification and PR as well. I can set up easily the first activity. So in in Odoo, we managed to recruit so many people, more than 2,000 in two years, by having a very simple process. We just call people once. If it's okay, we do an interview with the the right person of the department and then already a contract proposal. So this is what I'm, sho I'm showing here. So here I can just put the code with the client. Let's just save it in two days. Very clear if I have all, as I said, all the activities that I have to, to work on. And sometimes when you are uh, going through a lot of applications, there will be people that you will have to to refuse. So let's be very easy to, to do. Let me show Kevin Maxim. Sorry, Maxim, you are not fitting the job. Let's say that you need to, to be bilingual for the for this job. Might not be the case. So let's refuse Maxim. Maxim has some language issues. And so it's very important actually for for the recruitment to be transparent and to inform the candidates that they are not uh, they don't fit the job. So here easily you send an email. You can modify those templates, of course, uh, but to uh, be sure every candidate know if they don't fit the job. So it's important also for the the company uh, image. So however, the Pierre Canet, uh, he, he fits the job. <laughs> he works well. So let me just change my name for the presentation so it's not uh, it's not gonna m mess up uh, with uh, Maxim, who has a hard time with that. So <laughs> let me keep the the qualification. So he did. Uh, we did the call. It went well. So next time he's doing the interview. For the interview, I'm gonna manage uh, Sophie. Sophie is the one in charge of the marketing department. I'm gonna put her as an interviewer, and doing so, she will have access to this specific. Uh, job offer, so job yeah, job application, sorry. So it's important to know that in HR you have a lot of access rights. We, I can show you easily that here if I'm with Sophie's user, I don't see all the, I have to save before if you want to, sh to see the, the, appli the application here. I would also have to refresh, but what I'm saying is that the users in HR a very different uh, oh, uh, recruitment. And uh, it's very important to manage the user access right because in the other um, user, I, have, I am an HR officer, which means I have access to everything in the database HR-wise, uh, which is important. It's not the case for everyone. So there is a lot of private information uh, for every user in recruitment, in time off, in uh, all the application appraisal as well. We'll see that later. And here, by putting Sophie as an interviewer, she's just able to see this one uh, job application. All right. Since I'm here, I can show you also for the employee, for example, what you can see. You can see very few information but about the work information, not all the private information, since Sophie is not part of the uh, HR management. Let me go back to uh, the main database where I'm connected with Michelle, the HR officer. Uh, uh, we planned the interview, it went well, so we already did the contract proposal, we can generate offer, and finally, if the contract is signed, I can, oh, let me remove, just one sec, so I can remove the developer mode so it will be easier for everyone. Here we go. Uh, I can then create the employee. So he's been hired. I'm going to create the employee. What's great is the with all these features, it's that it's a very clear flow, and you don't want to encode several times the same information. Now I just as the applicant had to enter my data in the either in the email or in the on the website. This data will follow through every application. So you save a lot of time by not having to encode two, three, four times the same information. Everything is at the same place. So now I have my new employee. Uh, I can set up the 
the manager, like I said, it's very important for the onboarding and I can create an employee. So now Nicolas will be a new employee in the database. So let's create a user for him so we can later manage his time off, appraisal, and make him part of actually the day-to-day -day job. So let me create the user. All right, this is done. And here uh, it's pretty much done for the recruitment. So now we have to manage the day-to-day. -day. And for that, I will let, uh, I'm just gonna, before giving it to you, Maxime, I'm gonna launch the plan. So just launch the plan here, easy, easy button. So I can have a due date. So it's a new feature for the one who, who are well aware of HR. It's interesting to know that this is a very, very new feature, the due date. So if I launch a plan, I will have a lot of um, activities that, I've that have to be managed by every manager, coach, or the trainee himself. So onboard people, for example, training for me, and then for the other one will be, for example, set up the IT material and so on. So I, let you, I will let Maxim follow up with the employee and time off, and we'll see each other for the appraisal application. So, hello again. So now we have new collaborator in the company. Nicolas Kenen, welcome to you. As we say, it's very f easy and very fast to create an employee from uh, a job position, from a, a, um, a job application of whatever. Here, like uh, Pierre said, we have to manage uh, like 2,000 of application per month or per year. It depends on the size of the company. So maybe you can um, forget to fill some information as skills. So here you see on this, um, on this employee form that we have like the information that Pierre uh, managed to, to, to fill in. So the department, job position, manager, and coach. And here there is the resume about the experience, so the first contract signed is for due for your company is uh, the 31 of August. If I want to add a previous experience, let's say that this, uh, this person, so Nicolas, um, like was the CEO of uh, UCL before, so I can choose a type. It was experience education site project internal certification. I can say experience. I can choose a date. Let's say during three months of good job, he was CEO. And then I can save and close it. So that's the first thing. You can like put every uh, experiences that the your new employee has had in the past. Here, there is another thing, is the skills. Like, here, you can put it on the, the, the job application, but you can also, like, create directly new entries on the employee form. So here, I'm gonna just add some skills that uh, Nicolas Cunnan had, and we'll see if uh, it's a valuable person or not. So for the skills, um, I choose languages. And languages, I think that Nicolas Cunnan like speak good English, not very good, but good. English, let's say C1. Okay, great. But hablas español, save a new language, Spanish. Let's say very good Spanish, C1. And like it's lack French, not good. French, not good. B1, just good enough. Okay, so we have our skills now. Next step is to check the work information. So here, first thing, work address. The work address is the address of the uh, HQ of your company. But you can have like different work locations. So you have an office in San Francisco, one in LA, one in, uh, in Nigeria, in Lagos, one in, I don't know. But here, I'm ju just gonna take office. It's the name of the building. Yeah, quite standard, but office. Then we have the approvers. Very important because of the thing as to manage to the different uh, other application. 
since we are a uh, fully integrated um, uh, program, so expense, time off, and time sheet. So for, um, for uh, Nicolas, I'm going to say that Kenneth will manage his expense, his time sheet, and for Sophie, uh, and for, sorry, for Nicolas, for time off, it's not going to be Sophie, but let's say that it's uh, Mitchell that will be uh, the approvers for time off. Then, working hours. So here you see that Odoo generates himself some uh, working schedule. Here I have the 40 hours a week, I also have the 35 hours a week. Let's say that uh, Nicolas uh, work 40 hours a week and we will see that you have the details of when he work. He work from Monday morning from 8 to 12, Monday lunch 12 to 13, uh, 13, yes, uh, Monday afternoon he works from 13 to 17. We, you can change that if I know that it's a new thing uh, in some countries that you can do five five works day in four, so 38 hours in four days and so, you can manage this with the working schedule. Let's go back on Nicolas Kunen form. So we manage work information, then what we can see is that we have, and what, um, what Pike, sorry, Pierre <laughs> shows, shows to you is that if I have not the right access right to see those information, I cannot see it. So here, because I'm Mitchell and um, I'm the HR officer, I can see it. So here I can fill in the private addresses, I can fill the, the personal email, the, the personal phone, uh, the bank account number, the language, marital status, uh, Nicolas is single, single, alone, no wife, no children, nothing. The only thing that I can say about it is that he's not from Belgium, he's not from Nigeria, he's not from Uganda, he's from Kyrgyzstan. So, can fill in. Here, it's really important to have this information in your HR database for different reasons. First of all, it's legal um, for s like many countries, it's legal to have all this information. Second, second point is that if you want, like in the future, now or whenever you want, to have like other um, HR application uh, like payroll and uh, and stuff like that. You have to fill in this information because they impact the the, the computation of pay slips or the time off or what whatever you want. But you have to fill in. I'm not gonna fill like every uh, every field that we have under our eyes, but that's the the ID. And then last tab is the HR settings. HR settings, like we see that there is uh, a part of pin code, badge ID, it's um, in, the, in the case of you want to have a badge in, badge out in your company um, and stuff like that. The other thing is the status of a new employee. The, so like mainly you are an employee or a worker. So here, let's say that Ni Nicholas is an employee. He has a related user, so he can use do day to day and then I'm just gonna put all the costs for Nicholas really hard but thousands an hour and I've here for this okay so my employee form is quite complete last thing that I have to do here is to create a new contract for Nicola. So you see that there are smart buttons here and contract is in red. Just go click on contract, contract reference, first contract of Nicolas. Employee, still Nicolas, department, sales, marketing, contract and date. It's it depends, it is a permanent or not. Here we are in a permanent deal. So, no contract end date. Contract type, we are in a full time. The HR responsible, still Mitchell. 
employee stand up, stand up for um, 40 hours a week and for the demo we just say that the work and resource are is sorry working schedule okay contract details nothing to add more and salary information yeah uh, Nicholas has negotiated his salary very well so for him and just for him it's like six thousand a month quite good so can save here and you see that I've saved my contract I've created but in contract since 38th of August 2023 is still in red why because if I go back on my contract I can see that st the contract is still in the new stage let's run it and we'll see that if I go back to the form my contract is in uh, green right now very important is also the fact that if m the contract of your employee is running so there is a green light on your employee it for and we'll see later for the actual plans for time off and so for all these things will be compute only the the time off of the employees with a contract who is running okay so keep that in mind and go jump in time of application so in time of here what we can see is that the first thing that we see is the dashboard it's the personal dashboard La, as michel i have 20 days of pay time of left and uh, 129 hours of compensatory days available okay so quite good just for four months i think it's okay to create a new time off what i have to do is to go to configuration and time of type here there is some time of that are generated by you do so pay time of sick time of unpaid compensatory days extra hours and so but i have to add a new um, a new time of that is like we we call in uh, in french rtt and rtt is like when i uh, when i do uh, like i i sign for 40 hours a week and i do in fact 45 hours a week i have to to have like extra um, extra uh, paid time off that is not the paid the, the legal paid time off but all the one so let's say that i create the new one so the name is rtt here approval it's approval is for when an employee asks to to have time off like let's say this week who is the person who will have to approve this time off here if i just put by time of officer this person is here if i do by employee approvals is the approval that we have seen on the um, on the employee form so in the two cases here it's mitchell admin so i can just say by time of officer we can like choose if we want to take this time off in days half days or hours and uh, there is a lot of other um, of other field to to fill in it's like up to you the the thing that are also um, very important is the fact that can the employee request for an allocation or not so first of all if like take uh, if we take the, the the sick leave the sick leave there is no allocation needed because you cannot anticipate when you, you will be sick or not and but you have to approve it to be sure that uh, you have the, um, the 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 note of the of the medicine and uh, and so so here request allocation yes for sure can employee request more um, more time off that they they receive first no so here i can say that my rtt is quite good i have to create a new one another new one it's the seniority we'll see it later but seniority is very important too so seniority i don't have to 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 check all the um, the fields because it's quite the same as rct so here i'm just gonna just gonna say that it's mitchell that is time of officer okay 
I'm just gonna drink a little bit of water. And let's go back to time off. So I have created my two time off and now I have to allocate time off to Nicolas. We just arrived. So what I can do is go to approvals, allocation and create a new allocation. Here, new allocation. So uh, RTT 2023, it's not paid time off, it's RTT. And it's a regular allocation. So the validity period is the validity is the period uh, when Nicolas uh, can use his uh, time off. So here, from today to the 31 of December. Hop, how many days? Let's say 15. 15, and you can choose if you want that this allocation will be by employee, by company, by department, or by employee tag. Here. It's just for Nicolas because um, he just signed his contract and he has the, the right to have time off. So, Nicolas. Nicolas, perfect. And it's approved because I am the HR officer. So, I don't have to confirm, then ask for approval, and then the time off officer can approve it. I am the time off officer when I say, it's done. Okay, then, RTT, correct. But we've created another one. So, seniority plan. In my company, I think that if you work here for five years and more, you, has, you have the, uh, the right to have two RTT more per year. So, in, we are in 2023, in 2028, uh, Niklas will have 15 days plus two days of RTT because of seniority plan. Same in uh, same in 2029, in 2030, 2031. Okay, so let's go back to configuration. And what we have to do is an actual plan. I'm going to create one. You see that there is al already a senior seniority plan that uh, is created, but let's create a new one. Here, name, seniority, seniority RTT. Time of type, I have to choose the right one, it's still RTT. But let's say that we'll not use RTT. Let's say we'll use seniority. Okay, seniority RTT, it's okay. We're gonna use one level. So here, what I've said is that the employee has the right to have two demos, uh, two more days, sorry, after five years. So the start, the start date is not like one day after the allocation date because the allocation will be today. So it has to be five years. Up, five years. So you have to choose here. Five years after the allocation date. We'll see the allocation date on the allocation um, form. Here the rate. It's two days, monthly, no, yearly, not full, yearly, on the 1st of January. Okay, the limit is two per year and he can transfer all of them if he wants, so let's say two. In if, we, if we give uh, to people like 25 days and we only want that, we only want that the, uh, the uh, transfer to the next year like 10 days we have to put 10 days here if we we give like uh, 120 days we ju and it can transfer all the time off we can just say zero here and all the time off will be uh, transferred to the next year okay so here let's say just two i save and close it so we're okay Accrual is set up. Let's allocate it to Nicholas. So new Nicholas. Nicholas seniority. Let's hope that he will stay in our company for years and years, despite his lack in French. So here, the pay time of his seniority, and I want to have an accrual allocation. The only one is seniority RTT. 
the other is for pay time off. So here, the start date, that's what I say, and we will see it later. The start date is the date when I allocate this uh, actual uh, plan. So it will, uh, it, will, uh, it will not give days like today, because we have to wait five years to have like additional day at the end of the year. So here, can just, um, oh, I, I made it for Mitchell. Let's go back, do it for uh, Nicholas. Up. Do the same, RTT, Nicholas, uh, seniority, Nicholas. So not pay time off, seniority, accrual allocation, senior, seniority, RTT. I do, I do not put a limit because this is for the rest of his life, uh, the rest of his life in the company. Okay, perfect, I approve it. So my allocation is set right now, but to prove you that it's working, I'm gonna do the same for another employee. So let's say that I completely forgot to, um, to give to Mitchell this, um, this allocation. Mitchell has begun in, uh, our, in our company like seven years ago. I'm Mitchell, so never mind, I'll decide. So let's say, First of January, here I'm going to say seniority uh, Mitchell. Accrual allocation here seniority seniority RTT. So it's been like seven years. So technically for 2023, it should be two days um, at the end of the. Um, of the allocation, but here you see that there is zero days. That's why we have to uh, run the schedule action. So here, but don't worry. This action, when you are in a, in a production database, is uh, no, no. Uh, okay, this. Uh <laughs> This uh, schedule action is said to be uh, active like when you are in production database. So here, if I'm go on a location, uh, where she is? Well, time off here, okay. Update the number of time off. No, I run manually. And what we'll see in time off is the fact that if I check, I have now two seniority days available. So not complex, not too complex, but quite good. Um, and then I think that's for allocation per employee, it's done. What we have to do now is to add public holidays and add stress day. So configuration, public holidays. Here I'm gonna add for this year uh, Christmas. Christmas, hop, Christmas, oh shit, Christmas. Okay, it's for my company and the date is, we all know, 25th of December. So 25th of December. Here, if I go back to my dashboard, I can see, sorry, I can see that uh, the 25th of December here is now like not the same as the other day. We can see that I cannot take any more uh, time off during this period because it's a public holiday. We don't have to, to take one. So here, if I take compositary days okay, for the whole day, it will be zero hours because it's already a public holiday. Another thing is the stress day. Like in Odoo, we have three days of stress day a year. It's during the OXP. So during these days, the employee are not able to take time off. So it's the uh, opposite of the public holidays. So I want to say OXP, and let's remind you that the OXP will take place this year between the 8th and the 10th, the 11th, no, the 10th. 
the 10, the 10th of November. Okay? So don't forget that. I go back to my time off, to the dashboard. And what I can see now is that my days are in red because of I cannot take a time off here. I'm not allowed. I'm allowed the seven, but the eight, I'm not allowed anymore. Okay? Great. Last thing that uh, we have to see together is the case when I'm not Michelle here, I'm another person, I have asked for time off and we have to approve it. For the person who has to, um, to approve the, uh, the time off, you have to go to approvals, time off, and here you see all the time off that you have to approve. Here I see that Anita Oliver uh, asked for uh, three days of time off during uh, the 7th of August and the 9th of August. I am a bit late for, uh, for approval, but it's okay. Here I can just validate it. And if I go back to the employee, I can see that Anita Oliver on the time off here that the 7th, 8th, and 9th of August is now approved. And last but not least, how can I see how many time off my employees have taken this year or last year or do like comparison between? So for that, there is reporting in time off. But in my opinion, if you want to have this information, you have to go to employee. I know, quite bizarre. Okay, so employee, first Kanban view, then we have to go to list view. List view, select all your employees, action, and then you have the time of analysis by employee and by time of type, sorry. So if I click here, magic click, I see all the time of left taken during a period for all my employees and all the time of type. So perfect for me to be able to do some planning about, uh, I don't know, the production, the, the marketing or whatever. So here, I think, I think for employees and time off, we are quite good. So Pike, be my guest. Thanks a lot, Maxime. Thanks for all the great uh, features. So it's great that you show actually the the reporting uh, possibilities of Odoo. You have a lot of reporting possibilities in every application. You have it in recruitment, for example. Wh when I was working on the marketing job position, I can look at the reporting we have. So it's interesting to know where people come from, what works best. So if I click on source, I can see, depending on the stage, uh, from where people come from, who came from LinkedIn, or from undefined reason, email alias, and so on. So you have that in quite a few uh, applications. What you have, and I didn't show as well, is the referral application. It's actually a very simple application, so there is not so many features, but it still works very well, because if you see Nodoo, we recruited more than 2,000 people the two uh, past year, and uh, a lot of them came from referrals. So uh, the the, the, the your employees are the best source uh, from the world uh, to here, so to to bring people that fit the, the job. So how to do that? I can just, if I'm uh, on my employee, share uh, a link to a specific job position, for example, this one, I'm going to share now, get the link, and I can just send it to my uh, friend, uh, the people I know that would need it, and what does it do? It will actually just send me to the same uh, web page, but then I will get point if the this candidate, this application will go from different stages. Every stages in the recruitment can have a set of points. Then I I will then uh, get in my referral application, and with the points I can see from who I get some points. You see initial qualification of your rent and so on, and I can also uh, go into the rewards to see what I can get with this point. Maybe just a mug, because it's very rare to get the mug from Odoo, uh, or an Amazon Boucher, which uh, is also interesting. So this was for the referral. We saw the time off. Let's go and see what happens now that my employee uh, are set up. 
what's important is to empower your employee to make sure they they are fitting the job, they like what they're doing, and they feel great in the company. And what better way to do that than to create some recurring appraisal for your employee? So every few months, every year, you can create a new appraisal automatically that will where you can discuss with your manager uh, the, the job in itself and where you could improve, set up some goals. So I don't know if you noticed, but when we were looking at the employee application, uh, let's say from Nicolas, Nicolas has a next appraisal date on uh, early next year, so six months from now, since, since the beginning of his contract. So it's very, it's a new feature actually to have this on the employee. So you're able to see on the employee when is your next appraisal. Uh, where do you define that? It's in the appraisal application. And in configuration, I can define some appraisal plan. Here at the very uh, low lowest, I can see why it's in February, because it's six months from now after recruitment, then six months after, and then every two 12 months, I'm going to create automatically some new appraisal. So very important, we're actually doing so in Odoo uh, right now as well. So let me show you how it works. In the appraisal, here I have the main dashboard. In this main dashboard, I'm able to see the appraisal, the past one of every employee where I'm a manager. So if I look into one of those, you see I'm the manager here. So I can see, of course, the appraisal of my employee. I can see mine if uh, my manager also creates one for me. Uh, and I can see also the one that I've done, cancel, and so on. I can create as well a new one. So I could wait for the six, six months, but I'm not sure there's going to be many viewers after that. But in six months, I could have uh, the new appraisal created automatically. Let's create it manually here for Nicolas. Automatically, we see the manager is set up, Sophie Peterson. And here, I see everything because I'm connected again with Mitchell. So as Mitchell, I'm able to see all the configuration of an HR officer. For example, Sophie here, uh, Nicolas wouldn't be able to see the private note. The private note is only for the manager, so for Sophie, to be able to take some notes during your appraisal. So I'm going to define the date. Let's say it's for uh, the 10th of next month. Uh, I can edit the two templates for on the left side, the employee's feedback, on the right side, the manager's feedback. So it's HTML. You can put whatever you want, some picture as well. Um, and then once you are good with it, you can just confirm the appraisal to make it start. What happens when you start the appraisal? Here, I see both sides because I'm the manager. But if I would go into uh, the database with Sophie's account, let me go back here, go in appraisal, and I can see the one I created for Nicolas. If I click onto it, you see I'm the manager. I only see the manager's feedback. So I'm not allowed to cheat and to say, OK, what is my employee saying? Let me just copy it on my side because it's uh, not visible. I can force visibility here. But you will see I get an, a message which say, the employee's feedback will be published without their consent. We love consent. Don't do that. Do you really want to publish, publish it? This action will be logged in the charter. If I still go with it, I can see it. And uh, you see in the charter that the feedback has been published. So let's go back into this uh, database with all the uh, visibility. So here you see the two buttons to hide or not the one side or the other. I have the same right there. So th what is it important is once everyone is ready, did their part, everybody meets. So you can easily plan a meeting in your agenda here to, to choose when you are meeting with the employee. And then you make both sides visible and you share uh, your opinion on how the work is going, how you feel in the job, what are your next uh, step, where do you want to go in the company, do you want to change department maybe? So very interesting. We can define some goals. So here it's a new employee. He doesn't have some goals because if I look at the goals, I see all the other goals of the other employees. So let me create some new one for Nicolas. An easy one could be, yeah, present yourself to the team because he's new and it's great to get to know everyone. Present yourself to the team. He started already, like with what you've seen today, with let's say 25%. 
I can put some description, a deadline for next uh, month as well, and save it so I have a new goal for this appraisal. I can define as many goals as I want, and they are linked to the employee, so I will always be able to see them. What's also very important is to ask feedback because here Pierre is working in the sales department for the marketing as well. And we, we want to know how do people in the team feel about Nicolas. So what you will do is ask feedback. And by clicking on ask feedback, you are able to ask several other employees what do they feel about their uh, collaboration with Nicolas. So I can just send and What's great, also a new feature from the latest ver version of Odoo. I can see I'm asking for here three feedback and I didn't receive any notification uh, answer yet. If I click on it, I can see who didn't answer. Now it's everyone, but I can resend someone, resend uh, one of the uh, requests for the feedback to individually if I want. Let's go back on it. So here I can change it uh, during the appraisal, okay, like this. Uh, we have worked on to it and then there is another interesting tab It's the skills. The skill is very important to follow on the evolution of every employee. So as I said, English 85%, I think it's okay. Let's keep it like this. Spanish, yo hablo mejor español que antes, pero no es suficiente. Maybe we can change it to, uh, to B2 because it's not that good. French, ben, ça reste ma langue maternelle, mais je viens de Liège, donc euh, je pense qu'on peut mettre le maximum quand même. C2, c'est so ma mother tongue. So here we can change everything, and you will be able to see this evolution uh, for the skill level. You can justify it also here. It's very important because you agree with the employee, you discuss it, and you can put a justification. It might be uh, a certification that would serve as a justification. And as the manager, I can also write down any notes during the meeting from what we want to achieve, what is not working well, and so on. Uh, I can give a rating to this appraisal. B maybe you base your salary on this final rating, so it might be an interesting feature. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. Once we've finished with this appraisal, I can actually mark it as done. The fact of marking this appraisal has done will change the skills of the employee and put the one I, I actually changed here. So now if I go on Nicolas, you will see he did change his value for the skills. Since I'm on the employee, I can see also the overall evolution of those skills. We just created the employee today, so you won't be able to see a lot. But if I look at skill history report, you would be able to see the evolution of the skill throughout the years and you can define some specific goals based on that, for example. All right, so in the reporting, I can see the skill evolution. It's a, more, a bit more relevant here, but you can see the skill evolution for every employee. And here you did see that I'm improving in uh, French, but my Spanish, I should take some, uh, some cor courses uh, to improve my Spanish because it, it went down, but, but that's okay. All right, so we define all those appraisal. Now you can define goals for later on, and you, you were able to see actually pretty much everything about how to manage an employee in your Odoo database. The last thing that you might do is actually finish. Uh, you have to sometimes end collaboration, sometimes because people just don't fit the job or they change department or they, they are just retiring. So how do you do that? You go back into your employee application. Let's say that Nicola is not fitting the job anymore, and I can just archive the employee, and this is the equivalent of the employee termination. So I can define the reason for departure. Here, let's say he retired, so he didn't last very long, so one day before going out, and then it will close automatically all the activities linked to that user. So very easy to, to finish. I can also have a next access link. So this access link will make it very easy to send an email uh, to the private email address of the employee so he can receive all the documents he needs, so it's all the pay slip and so on. So I can apply, um, and that's it. If I go back into my appraisal application, just to show you, uh, I was using here a very similar template for both sides. 
you can choose this template on your configuration here in the settings so you can modify them if you keep the same one for everyone if you need a specific one for depending on the department you can go straight into the department and here on the settings or your of your department you can cho choose some custom appraisal template and a specific appraisal survey so now if you get a bigger company you might need more specific feedbacks and survey, so also great features. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We covered everything. If you have any question, feel free to ask, and I'm gonna ask Maxim to come join me for those questions. <laughs> Okay. So All right. A lot of greetings from everywhere. Uh, okay. When people apply via our website, the application are sent to the Odoo recruitment module, but we're not able to send a message directly to the candidate via Odoo. Uh, I think it's actually possible. So uh, when you saw, let me put, uh, go back in the recruitment application. When I go on an application, uh, I can directly discuss with the candidate so if i go back on nicolas just below i have the chatter if i send a message here you see it will send a message to uh, nicolas directly so you're able to discuss with your your candidates using the chatter and you can show it here a small email has been sent to nicolas so yes this is possible can we schedule the exact hour for the interview as well yes, it's a again. possibility so here I was showing a meeting, spe I was showing, giving uh, a schedule for the interview, which I already set up before. But if I want to create a meeting, I don't have to share the interview av availabilities. I can just create some new one. Uh, let's say share availabilities. I select a specific time. I get a share link with those time I selected. I can send it in my email and use it directly to schedule the interview. All right, so uh, this is done. Chatter, so thank yeah. you, Stefan. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, Naturalize. Naturalize because it's a data. It's a test database, it's yeah. It's a test database, demo test database. So okay. has the onboarding process containing employee been fixed? Onboarding sets that activities for the employee, but the activities are not shown to employees. It's true, it's a very good point. It's very, it has been fixed. So before, uh, for the ones who don't know, when you were planning all those activities on onboarding, you were not, uh, if you didn't have the right access right, you were not able to go on the employee and see those activities. So this has been changed. So now uh, it's, uh, it's public and you can actually go see all those uh, activities. So good point from Steph, but it, it is corrected, yeah. Uh, uh, how do we need more data from PTB? Okay. Demonstration database, yeah. How can we track employee, employee attendance? We have an application who's called attendance. Yeah. And so that's why we, we spoke about um, badge in, badge out. You can like here checking and check out directly. And we will see, um, you will see if uh, there is like extra hours or less hours that it should be. And, uh, and yeah, so let's go on attendance for that. Check in, check out, yeah. Employee How can we track the attendance? Like same. same answer. Employee receive part of the salary on a bank card and part of the salary in cash. Yeah. How they keep accounting correctly? That's an accounting uh, question. So <laughs> you have to wait until the, the next webinar about accounting. Yeah, so uh, with the payroll, you can create pay slip and so on. And then once you created your pay slip and your batch, you can create uh, entry in accounting and there they manage the, the payment. That, that's not really our, our scope. Business. Any chance to have onboarding plan with each activity planned as per certain offset of the start date? Currently, no relativity for action. It's a good point when I'm creating the activities there uh, for the recruitment on the onboarding. So let me show you the onboarding plan in the employee app. 
configuration on offboarding. That's where I'm setting up all those activities. Here, I'm setting up three at the same time, but uh, I can also change the um, activities because uh, if I go into my actual activities, is it here? Do I have activities here? No, but let me just show you in any uh, configuration that I have activity type. And here I can set a next activity. So I can suggest a next activity and then choose that some next activity will trigger the next one. So that's how you could create a flow and not just a set of activity that will be all uh, set up at the same time. All right. Mm -hmm. Will it be sent out for digital signing for module? Yes, we can do it. So we have the, the sign application who can do that. We don't show it like today because there are like you say a lot of application about uh, HR in Odoo, so we have to choose some of them. But maybe in the future we will explain to you how it works. It's really um, really easy to use it. So you just have to to create a new contract like uh, like I did just before and send it to to s to to signature. So send in signature request, and then you just uh, your employee, your future employee, just have to to send it back, and uh, and then it's good. For the contract, is it possible to mention the extra legal advantages? Company car, lunch voucher, okay. mobile phone. So it depends. So this information are mainly used for payroll. So like in Belgium, we have like CP uh, 200. We have company car, we have lunch voucher, we have mobile phone or, or laptop or whatever. So it's it's mainly uh, a payroll matter but if you want you can just put notes or on the on the contract and and so but you don't have fields uh, for that if you don't use payroll so if you want to have this kind of fields you can just uh, take the 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 uh, payroll app and it will be good but it's is is if it's just for information you can just add notes mm, yeah so uh, it's a bit more complex, but with the payroll application, you can set this up. Uh, how to correctly okay. set the allowable number of days off, the maximum number of paid days off for each employee? I think that's what we've seen with the Acryl plant. Yep. So we, you can you can do that easily with Acryl plant. So you can create like different Acryl plants for different employee. You can create Acryl plants per department and. If uh, I don't know where you where you live, uh, Maya, but uh, in Belgium we have like 20 days uh, a year, and despite of uh, how long I've been uh, I've been working in this company, the only thing that I have is the fact that I can have like additional days, like seniority days, uh, like every five years, every years or whatever. So here, what I can say to you is, you have two options create acryl plans for each employee or create an acryl plans for seniority and just set the minimum number of day that all the employee um, can have uh, in a year and then just put an acryl plan for every of them. Thanks, Maxime. What's the quick answer on Odoo's GDPR compliance? You have an actually, if you do go on odoo.com slash GDPR, you have all the information about GDPR or who is in charge of uh, managing the data and so on. So Odoo is pretty much GDPR compliance for most things, but you have the very details over there. So a bit too complex to go all Further. about it. Yeah. Actually, there is a big bug in time off. Oh. On time off defined to taken by hour, if you change working hours of employee, all time off will be false. Yep, that's something that will be fixed in the next version. It was a real issue um, in V16, but we are on it. I thought it was a feature. No, <laughs> it's not a feature. that's not. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a module for recruitment agency where we apply on <coughs> behalf of the candidate to many different roles and companies and then follow up on different custom steps that each, each company follows? Without having the details of the different needs, it's hard to answer. I don't think it's what recruitment is made for, but maybe if you look into it uh, with the multi-company environment, maybe it's a solution. Uh, I think we would have to go a bit further and have more information to answer that better. 
you, you can have this webinar downloaded right. offline. The, ah, uh, I'm not sure how YouTube works, but uh, I think that's it, it's, uh, the it's about uh, account or pr primary account yeah. or I don't <laughs> know five star account or what. Is there, a quick like <laughs> <laughs> Is there a quicker, quicker way, way to, to uh, add bank holidays, bank holidays that are already fixed by the you country? Can, uh, you can do an import. It, it's, the, uh, it's the only way to do it, like not manually, like create every day and set up from this day to this day. But the only way to do it is to import it. So, yeah, because every bank holidays are uh, related to one year. It's not... Uh, Every year, the 25 is a bank holiday. No, it's the 25 of uh, December uh, 2023 is a bank holiday, and we have to do it like for next year too. Are we able to get out organization chart in Odoo 16? In 16, no, but uh, come to the Odoo experience. <laughs> so it's a feature coming up. So you have the link just yeah, just above. You have there is a link to Odoo experience where we'll you will be able to see Maxima and I again. And uh, it's a new feature coming up, so having this organization chart. I All right. Oops. Oh, sorry. Whoops. So uh, okay. here. Can, Can you present the question for colleagues' feedback? Yes, for sure. Yeah, for the colleagues' feedback, you can create a, f a specific feed. It's uh, actually uh, a survey that you send, and you choose which survey you send for every uh, appraisal when you ask feedback. So you can customize it there. Can you look number of compensatory hours left to Mitchell and Mitchell. check after change working hours? So yeah, as we yeah, said, it's something we said, we're it's working uh, out. It's a bug that we will fix as soon as possible. For we legal time off. Will it be possible to set them at the beginning of the year but make them count as weekend day, not cotton when overlapping with paid? So weekend day is like holiday? I don't understand the need, so not content when overlapping with paid and paid time off. But if you want to have bank holiday as weekend day, I don't know if you work on weekend day, but it's the same thing. So why do you want to have bank holiday as week? I don't, don't sorry Miguel, but I don't have it. S let's go, let's follow. Thank you, Simon. Thank you, Quentin. Thank you, Jeremy. Quentin. Quentin. Uh, for, the, for an employee that is still studying, where do you record all the academic exam dates and certification? Uh, you can create with the, the badges. You, so, uh, would you know that? <laughs> Maxime, <laughs> having... I know a little bit about uh, exam and certification, but uh, yeah, you can create like different badges. Uh, you yeah. go on uh, your employee forum here you have the the difference uh where is the ah you have to go on uh, debug mode um, i think i am in debug mode yeah i'm in debug mode right now but here you can see the resume you can some add some education yeah take the lead i'm gonna take the lead because that's weird not sure what you want to show uh ch -ch -ch -ch. he's archived ah he's archived <laughs> already okay Rough. It didn't last long. <laughs> 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 okay, but that's weird. What uh, do you... Are you trying to showcase the badges? The badges. I think it's a module that uh, I didn't ah, put yet. Okay. okay. So here, if you're going to run bot, you would be able to see badges. Uh, it's a specific module that you have to add. And where you can follow... Here at the end, you have badges. Badges, okay. So if you want to have like a certification... Uh, for I don't know uh, for English exam driving uh, license. <laughs> so, but just question if you want to do it, you have like you can do everything you want in the um, in the uh, the badges for kind of thing. So, but if it's the 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 goal is to have like every uh, every studies uh, every exam and so. I think that the the employee form is the best for you. Yeah, but you can also work with skills. If it's considered as a skill with the resume, you can say what where you worked. And so you can have a quite a good follow up on that as well. Is uh, there going to be another presentation regarding the timesheet of the employees? 
the timesheet maybe, maybe not. is uh, timesheet is in the service scope. Yep. So there is a webinar on service that was out already. So if you look at Odoo webinar services, you might find more information about timesheet. Uh, why do I get the employee uh, should uh, be linked uh, to a user prompt when I click on launch plan on the employee's account? Why do I get the employee should be linked to a user prompt? Because uh, it's dependent on the activities you set up. Uh, here are some activities, where for example, if I need to set up time off for the employee, well, it's normal that the employee has a, a user account. Uh, and yeah, so that's why on launch plan you have this uh, issue. If, for example, you have an activity li linked to fleet and you didn't set up fleet correctly, it won't work as well. If you are asking, you create a launch plan for an employee and you didn't set up the manager and one of the activity is for the manager, it won't work again. So I think it's a setup uh, configuration you should look at. Okay, next one is, oh, can I reply from Shutter to the candidate? So we have we already showed, it, yeah. uh, showed this directly into the directly. application. So if the candidates answer on the application, you will you will see it in the chatter. You can answer there, and uh, it's the difference between send a message. Will you will be able to talk with the uh, the actual candidate, and if you do log note, you talk internally with other users. Uh, do you think it's necessary for a company with only three employees? Like I say every time, the only two things that every employee, uh, every company uh, needs. Uh, needs in the world, it's accounting and HR. The only two things. Yeah. And it depends. My, maybe you don't need the RCR for CVs, but it's still interesting for recruitment. Third employee is still interesting. For time off, of course, it's important. They will all love to be able to take time off <laughs> easily. <laughs> you also need to keep the data of third employee. Like that's also a requirement. So, of course, I think it's interesting for third employee. Maybe not all the features, but uh, at least the basic some one. of them. It's not a pack. You yeah. can choose application uh, or not. The HR localization package for Croatia in plan anytime soon, or about other countries in Europe. So I think it depends if you are talking about HR localization for payroll. This is very specific. You don't need a lot of uh, localization for the other application. Yep. You can set it up how you want. But for the payroll, it's true that there is very specific legislation per country. So it's uh, a work in progress. Yep. We are working work on to progress, it. Work in progress. I don't. I'm not going to lie that Croatia is not, not our first um, priority. priority because we are working on others right now. But like uh, in in years, maybe. Yeah, if uh, you there is a lot of uh, new database in Croatia, it might yep. become a priority. So might if become. you're a partner and you're selling new <laughs> database, we, we will work Go on, on it faster. How to handle a yeah. lot of exceptions for the fix legal time defined in the beginning instead of going one by one uh, fixed legal time uh, do you mean legal time about time off uh, do you do you know what the uh, i'm uh, not sure don't understand how to make a lot of exception for the fixed legal time defined in the if you could ah. miguel maybe give a, a bit more detail of what you're asking i'm not sure uh, yep. what exception uh, I think what I understand the, is that the f is the fact that you have like uh, employees that will receive like 20 days a year, some other like 15, other 16, and you want to be able to do something like that, not one by one, but you, as I show, you can um, you can do it by department, by employee, by uh, employee tax. So in if you want to. To do it like more easily, if you want, if you have like a lot of different uh, fixed legal time, uh, you can like just put um, tags on your employee to be sure that every time that you have to do an, an allocation, it will be for every employee that has this fixed legal time uh, in time off. If if it's fixed legal time of working. You just have to put working schedule. I don't. I don't know if uh, if one of those two uh, two answer was the the good one. But right, let's continue. Yeah. Uh, 
Thank you again, Stefan, and thank you for the answer you gave as well. Uh, what? Uh, so I'm going to take those three. What is the other version? One is Odoo 17 available and Showcase 360. So today we were on uh, version 16.4. Let me verify that. 16.4, which is out. 17 is not out. It will be out for the OXP, of course, in November. So Eight, uh, we, nine, are of November. we are so excited. Uh, 9, 10, 11. No. Oh, uh, oh, 9, 10. 8. 8, 9, 10, 11. <laughs> Eight, nine, uh, feel ten, free. Eleven. There is a link. Feel free to join. There will be a lot of people. Very interesting talks. And a lot and of More fun. about uh, every application. And so the last question was about 360 feedback. So the 360 feedback is a configuration you have in app results. So at the very beginning, next to app result plans, I have the 360 feedback. So it's just to ask to fill a survey to the employee. If I click onto it, I can see what are the, the different questions I'm going to ask. What's great is that what has been improved is the security again, because it was a big issue. You really want, uh, you have sensible information in your hands, and it was a, very, a big focus. So now, for example, the, the survey for, for appraisal are just for appraisal. You won't have any issue for that. And how does it work is now I set up the survey for the appraisal, the 360. I go on one of my employee on one of my employee, and I can ask feedback for one of the confirmed app results. So here I can have the 360 feedback, uh, choose to whom I'm sending it, and then I will have all the answers. So to have the the feedback from the other member of the team, other employees. Quite good. Thank you for answering. Thank you, Maxime. My pleasure. How to easily update earn leave upward of or downwards? So uh, upwards, uh, you can always update easily with the time off or with accurate plan downwards, uh, just to give it more or less, I yep. guess. That's it. Like, uh, oh yep. Yeah, you can always delete an allocation and do a yep. new one with less yes. as well. So you can pretty much Refuse do whatever you want. it and then delete it and then re redo it. So yeah. Will OXP be available online live? Yes. For sure. For sure. <laughs> 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 There will be advertisement. It will be live. Uh, it will be everywhere. Don't worry. Don't worry. Is if it you, possible? If you go on, uh, yeah. Every place of the world. Is it possible to for an employee to apply a time off for another no. employee? The only no. the only person um, will be able to do that is the HR uh, officer. So it's the only person to, who can like take time off for another employee, but we, we cannot like uh, add uh, uh, an access right to, to let people choose the, the time off for other employee. It's cool if uh, they are friends, it's not cool if they are not. Okay, so Nina has a lot of question about time off. So carry forward between the years we can show you how to set up two pay time off with different expiry date as well. Uh, only showing time off, but in your presentation, there are publicly stress that how to add it. So to be honest, we Maxim showed that. So I think yep. if you go back into the video, you will be able to see it. But when I'm giving a time off, um, I have uh, an expiration date. So when those apply, uh, also the accrual plan uh, that can give you Yeah. Like, if you want that the, the time off is available during like a year. So here, uh, let's say that I uh, I uh, I give to uh, to Mitchell, so we can directly see it. Um, pay time off uh, with a regular location with a validity period of like two months. Let's say so, it's done for the 31 of October. So I give him 10 days. If I confirm it, we can see that I have on my dashboard like some pay time off that are available. I have 10 days of pay time off that is valid until the 31 of October. So I think that yeah. respond to respond to the an the question. And the other one is about stress that and public holidays, uh, I've shown which you can see there, but also rewind a few minutes and you'll yep. be able to see it. When is the next webinar on accounting? Uh, it's a bit Don't personal, know. but uh, I thought it was already enough information for today, but <laughs> <laughs> we are about HR, so let's keep on HR with okay. HR question. 
Uh, that's what uh, we answered already. Mm. I need to go. See you, Simino. <laughs> it was great having you. <laughs> Will I be able to get the video later? It's, uh, yeah, it's on YouTube. How can oop, an employee initiate resignation request? Uh, honestly, I don't think you're going to resign just like so. So just send a message for yep. <laughs> to your manager or whoever you have you an want. issue in your company, Maxwell. <laughs> 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 so it's very easy. Just send uh, a message. How can you make an offer to an employee? Uh, do you want to show the generator for when you are in the uh, recruitment application, you can generate an offer. I don't think I have the right application for that right now, but uh, I wouldn't be able to showcase in this database. I think I'm going to go on the run, but I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay. Okay, perfect. <laughs> maybe, maybe later, but uh, let me just explain it. It's going to be easier than to try to go on a run. But uh, we can create an offer with the, the in the recruitment, you can create contract, uh, configure your contract. One that correctly configured, like uh, Maxim showed, you can generate an offer directly on the one of the stage of the, uh, the recruitment. Uh, when you generate the offer, you choose what job you are creating the offer form, what is the wage you're going to propose, and then you send it to the applicant. He can sign, the HR officer can counter sign, and then it will create automa automatically the contract. Okay, so legally speaking, it's mandatory to mention on the contract all the extra legal advantages based on Belgian law, so it will be very relevant to develop this option. Like I said before, it's linked to the payroll so if yeah. you have payroll on your database you have all these uh, advantages that are uh, set uh, we are not like out of law don't worry uh, laurence uh, it's just a matter of uh, application and how many time we had we have to present you like 10 or 11 application yeah so there is a module go on the module <laughs> on payroll you you implement payroll, there is a Belgium localization and you have as many advantages as you want. Not, not maybe all of them, N but... Not all of them. Not all of them, <laughs> that's true. How to manage pay slip? Same. Uh, Same it's payroll. again with the payroll. You guys are very cool. You are cool, Maya. <laughs> 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 thank you. Uh, thank you as well. Can you show uh, 360? We I we did, did again. Did it again. Is it I don't speak. Uh, <laughs> it's not for <laughs> us. Uh, thank you for coming. That is a big and uh, great test. As for me, if it it was normal, ah, it was a test, Gary. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, you don't trust the support. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you, you guys bringing the payroll, like Oof, as I said, maybe we'll give uh, something. Um, How about soon can you come with HR payroll for Sudan? Yep. So we are working on uh, African localization, mainly for Kenya right now because we have an office over there. Uh, but as soon as we have more resources, more contract, more need, uh, we will work on those localization as well. When will be when next will and what will be the topic? Uh, November the 8th? Uh, 212, so it's there. Ah, okay. OXP. So well this done. is the other experience. So this is like the full webinar. Mm. And then you won't ask when is the next one, I promise. There will be oh enough can of that. I link the with my external website? Why would you need an external website yep. when you have the one for do? Like, doesn't make sense. Oh but what you can do is you can have uh, redirection, though. You can have some redirection on your website if you have a simple link to the uh, Odoo's page of recruitment. It's very easy to do some uh, redirection if you really want to keep your website, but we also have a great uh, website builder. So it's uh, the same question. Da -da, same. Um, okay. Is there a, an easy overview for a manager for the compensatory days hours? Like I show, you have to go to employee, uh, click on list view, select all your employee, and then like action, uh, reporting uh, by employee and by time of type. Like and you see all what has been taken and what is left uh, for the rest of the year. How to import a starting value PF, the compensatory hours work time account. I'm not so sure what you are trying to import. You want to imp 
compulsory hours work time. You just you want to 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 give okay. I think you have to. Uh, if you are talking about uh, working schedule, uh, don't advise you to import on it because you won't have thousand of them. So just make change it yourself. Uh, and compulsory tory hours. I don't think you need to import them. But if you also work use the work entries in payroll, you can work with uh, compulsory days, uh, hours, extra homeworking and so on. Homeworking, we it's, it's different. It's a new feature coming up as well, uh, where you can work with from home. Maybe a bit unrelated, so, but uh, Yeah, very unrelated. Uh, <laughs> unrelated. I so get it that you manage yourself, but. <laughs> 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 uh, on yeah. the resignation ask, can the employee initiate the request uh, I Maxwell also wants. Is it Maxwell that wanted to leave this company before? Yep, that? I think Maxwell. I think you, have you need a, a discussion the with, with your manager. Uh, uh, <laughs> Maxwell, <laughs> go uh, go to your manager. Just go to, to your manager and talk. <laughs> <laughs> So we are working slowly on developing a localization for France. Yeah. Yep. That's true. Uh, we are arriving at the end of this webinar. Okay. Well, what it was choose? great to uh, be working with you, answering all your questions. I uh, uh, hope you learned a lot and you're ready to use the HR scope with the, uh, for your company or for your, company, local your client as well. And yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks all for coming. Goodbye. <laughs>